I'm also very happy that Avak is playing Stoneheart. It's an Avak game, he thinks. Well, yeah, that that is a reasonable, reasonable thing to say. I've had more than a few, more than a few people recommend it to me. It's been on my radar for quite some time. I've had the game for a long time, but uh, back in a uh, much earlier state of development. And obviously, some of the shenanigans around uh, the... Uh, features that got into the game prior to release and the uh, d devs signing off on the project uh, the, all of the kind of drama around that didn't exactly um, thrust it uh, forward as a game that I was going to make a lot of time for but actually no I recently Lady Sheila checked it out I think it was off the back of us just I idly chatting in my office while I had uh, another caster up on the screen and they were playing stone Half and it caught her eye and uh, it caught my eye and yeah so here we are giving it a giving it a check out it does seem to have developed quite nicely quite quite nicely right i'm not running any mods though there is apparently a big mod um the ace mod the some sort of um community like a authorized community expansion mod uh, but we're going to be jumping into just a plain old 1.0 single player experience. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with Stoneheart, ooh, that sounded a little bit loud. Uh, let me jump back just a second because uh, that was quite a loud ding. Uh, but Stoneheart is uh, in the same vein as games like Nomoria. It's a very pretty little game. Um, same sort of vein as Timber and Stone, uh, for those of you who are aware of that one. Uh, let me drop the effects volume a good old chunk down to above there. I think would be better. Oh wow, Spaceman Joe! Thank you so much for the gift subs to Brogantic, uh, uh, Dunju, uh, Plisky. We've also got Jenna Walker, Tommy Lee, Genesis, uh, Demos Kisami, William Chapman, Tuttles Gaming and Nihilus in the vacuum. Also, I'm sorry for getting your name wrong earlier, uh, Deimos. Now I can actually see it correctly. It is not Damon, it is Deimos. <laughs> very well. That is very, very kind of you. Please put some love in chat for, for that prodigious generosity there from Spaceman Show and all of those who now have subs. Um, welcome to your dapper emoticons, enjoy. Right, let's jump into the game, shall we? I think we should. This is the story of a brave band of settlers from. I really, really do like the, this way of building up the, the beginning. We can go with the Ascendancy, ideal for new players. Earnest and hardworking, loyal and well-rounded. Citizens of the Ascendancy chop, build and farm, confident that the known world is theirs to inhabit. Uh, we have Oriah's children. The people of the desert learned early that to survive they needed each other, and preferably as many others as they could reach. Now. Visitors from uh, find them generous hosts with access to goods from all over the world. Bit more of a crafting focus with them. And then the Northern Alliance. Brave and hardy, the men and women of the North live for the sight of a new dawn over unexplored territory. Armed with compass and hatchet, they pride themselves on their tenacious adaptability. Uh, I know which one sounds more interesting to me. Uh, Mrs. Fino, thank you so much for the seven months of support. Seven months. Here's to many more. Cheers. Oh, cheers to you. Thank you so much. Uh, Zangiri just gifted a sub to Lady Shelab. Oh, that was very kind of you, Zangiri. That's your 13th gift sub on the channel as well. Thank you so much. There you go, Lady Shelab. You too now have the dapper emotes. Okay, so, uh, I think we're going to be going with the Northern Alliance. I, I just like the sound of them myself. Let's go ahead and grab you. Womp. So, this is the story of a brave band of settlers from the Northern Alliance, a clan of tenacious explorers. Seeking new lands and adventure, they set off too. We have temperate, forests, rivers and mountains, the default home of the Ascendancy. The desert, which is dry and sandy with chunky hills and sparse vegetation, the default home of Raya's children. And the Arctic, which is our favorite based on our people. And, th and this portrait changes as you make these choices, which the way is amazing. Um, snowy with tall mountains and large water bodies. Default home of the Northern Alliance. Now, from what I understand, 
each group, when you start off the game, you'll, you get given a choice of the kind of gear loadout of your people, and the, the skill progression, the skill tree, is different for each race, I believe. I believe this is the way it works. And so certain areas are more favorable for that particular spread of skills. Um, for example, amongst the Northern Alliance, you get stonemasons and then you get potters. To become a potter, you have to be an accomplished stonemason. Whereas in the desert, it's the other way around. You start off as a potter and then become a stonemason once you're a good enough potter. And as a result, you have um, clay is a much more um, accessible resource to start in the desert, whereas in the Arctic, stone is a more accessible resource. I wonder if Avak will go not dwarf. <laughs> what a silly, silly thing to suggest. My lord, you have not watched me play enough games, clearly. Or maybe you have, and that's why you're, like, not a dwarf. Hmm. No, I, I, I fully expect we're going to be going, going dwarf with this one. Well, for some reason, the Northern Alliance sounds appropriate when it comes to Avak and our community. Indeed. Indeed. I, I like to think so. And thank you very much for the Twitch Prime sub there. Uh, Patronorixius. I hope I said that right. Bit of a stumble there, but uh, hopefully it's okay. Uh, right. Not going full dwarf. Heresy. I know, right? Okay, we're going to be going with Arctic again because I think that our particular skill set will be better suited to this. Set off to the Valkyrie Tundra, a location that is something, 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 something. So this is uh, our portrait. Now we can go peaceful. If you didn't want to have to worry about enemies, you could choose this. We won't be. We can go normal. Adventure forth in a world fraught with danger. Your town will be subject to raiding enemies. Or face more difficult monsters than normal mode. Hmm. I'm still new to the game. But I think I'd be up to the challenge if chat would like to see me uh, aim for for hard. I, I don't mind giving, giving it a try at the very least. So I'm going to give this choice to chat, I think. Uh, Batty Boy would like normal. Okay. Bad Master would like hard. Ooh, it looks like there's a lot more hards coming in there. Uh, you are actually... Ooh, there's a lot of normals now. Just a flood of normals. A couple of hards here and there. Takarosh, aim for the stars. Oh, Lady Sheila is, is weighed in. I wasn't expecting that. Lady Sheila thinks we should go hard. Why? Right, okay. That's interesting. If you're not aware, Lady Sheila is actually currently let's playing this on her YouTube channel. Out of curiosity, Lady Sheila, what uh, difficulty setting did you go for? And thank you very much to Judge Warehouse for the subscription there. Very, very kind of you indeed. And I do apologize. Uh, I missed the cheer a little bit earlier. Whoa! Thank you so much for the 15 bits. Very excited. If you upload this consistently, I will stalk your channel more than I already do. <laughs> well, I don't know if I'm going to be uploading this yet. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm coping okay on normal, and you are way better than me at strategy. So you should do hard. <laughs> ah, hitting me with the compliments. Damn it. She knows me too well. Okay, I guess we're going to be going hard then. We'll see how it goes. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, it was about 50-50, I think, overall in chat. So Lady Sheila, with the with with the complimentary bribes, will will uh, will tip the balance. Okay, uh, Apple Fumble. I think Avak will find normal too easy. I feel hard is the way to go. Yeah, we'll go with hard. So uh, a location that is sure to be a daunting place to start anew. My goodness, that's a bit freaky. All right, let's go to the start roster then. Okay, so we've got a, a bunch of people and they've got, all got different kind of characteristics. This should be an interesting one. The different uh, stats actually make quite a lot of, uh, of uh, difference. I believe mind is more, well, inf influences diligence and curiosity. Uh, so uh, helps with mental activities such as crafting and keeping their head clear. So I guess like not running away in battle. Um, yeah, diligence, maybe, I'm not sure. Body influences muscles at speed and stamina. It helps with attacking harder, faster, and having more health. And spirit influences courage, willpower, compassion, and inspiration. So a bit
bit of a mix, really, there, because it sounds like that would be useful in combat, but also in crafting. Interesting. Grunach, this is weird. I'm playing Stonehearth, and then Avak is also playing Stonehearth. Oh, well, it happens here and there. Uh, okay, let's see about this. We're not going to be re-rolling the characters so much, unless we get a, a really, really particularly bad um, set of traits. But uh, our first individual is charismatic. When Grud Frostweaver walks into a room, people always take notice and courageous. Grud Frostweaver loves to save others and puts the safety of the town as paramount. Well, you know what? We're not just going to be going for, for these names here. We are, in fact, going to be taking names from chat. Thank you very much, uh, Jiva Goliak. I hope I pronounced that right. I am certain I did not. But we're going to try and get uh, Nightbot to help with this one, I think. Let's see. Nightbot, pick a random user for me. Go ahead and let me know who we get. Mrs. Fainor. Very well. Very well. So let's swap these over. There you go. Welcome to the group. Nightbot cheats. Oh, Paul will tell you. Ah, Nightbot is super, super random. It's, it's, it's the best way. Nightbot is a disciple of Chaotocles. <laughs> Ms. Vaynor won the death lottery. Wow. Wow. Okay. Uh, Erica Tharon has green thumb. Erica Tharon seems to have a way with plants that is somewhat indescribable. And opinionated. Erica Tharon has an opinion on everything and isn't shy about sharing it. But we've got a couple of looking dampers over here that I'm going to just quickly check in on. Uh, oh, no rem remso. Oh, no remso. I, I hope I pronounced that right. Thank you very much for the 16th month. And uh, you were a vote for heart. Very good. Uh, we've also got uh, Sittings. Sitting sit in Texas, I, I guess. Thank you so much for the subscription there. And Nightblade J. Thank you as well for the Prime sub. And to Rex Noctis for the 500 bits. That's very, very kind of you all. And Physics Nerd as well. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so, so much. It's really, really appreciated. But it is time for us to get another roll. Okay, let's uh, grab another name. Who have we got this time? We've got Alvalord. Very well. There we go. Let me know if you would like the gender switched on, on any character that you get. Uh, we can take care of that. Some names are a little bit more ambiguous than others. Um, but you can easily just swap them around. I'm not going to worry too much about appearance. If you would like me to just mash the random appearance button a couple of times, though, just let me know. Uh, oh, I, I know you, sit, sit in, but... The thing with me is, is, is I, the, the part of my brain that reads stuff is horribly lagged behind the rest of my brain. Uh, at least when I'm, I'm dealing with names. It's really, really hard. Uh, right, okay, so well done there. I don't mind being female, then female you shall be. Ragnar Odelep. Okay, we've got very average stats at the moment. Very, very average indeed. Excitable. Ragnar can never seem to keep their emotions in check, so they become happy or sad much faster than normal. Very well, let's uh, roll this one and see who we got. We got Jake Toady for this one. There we go. Welcome to the clan there. Next up, uh, Vodir is callous. Vodir never really connects with others. This helps them to not be as hurt when a tragedy strikes, but their constant guarded composure makes them slow to make friends. And Professor. Vodir will help people gain experience in the basics of their class, though uh, their explanations tend to be a bit, well, long-winded, shall we say. Very well. Let's go ahead and get a new name. <laughs> uh, Nightbot takes bribes. Uh, Jiva Goliak. 
let's get you in here. I hope I'm pronouncing your name at least somewhat close. Here we are. Welcome, welcome. And finally, someone with a lot of body here. Probably uh, a good combatant. A loner. Induna doesn't really care for the company of others. They prefer to be by themselves. And Storm Chaser. Thunderstorms, sandstorms, blizzards. In Induna loves them all. That's actually quite a nice little... Uh, Nice little quality there. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Lighthouse so uh, Society, for the subscription there. I had to double beat Society. Do apologize for that one. Right, okay. Let's go ahead and roll it. We get Saitanga. There we go. Perfect. We've got our entire roster filled out. Marvellous. Okay, with that, we can get back to actually embarking. So, we're going to accept this roster, and hopefully it's going to work out well for us. I will give uh, those who have been named a final moment to uh, request a gender change, or, or just to randomly mash, randomize appearance for a little bit. But we should be fine. Oh, you would like to be mailed. There we go. Sorted. Sorted, sorted. Does the stream lag slightly behind chat, or is that just you? Tuttles, it, it may be you. It could be Twitch. There is a slight latency, and there always will be. Um, but I am running on low latency mode, so it should be... A, fairly fast at least compared to many other streams uh kiddo just subscribed thank you very much for the sub there there will be plenty more names on the way so don't worry if you didn't get named there's gonna be a lot of opportunity okay it looks like everyone is... Uh, can you capitalize at the beginning of your name? Certainly I could. Sorry, I didn't capitalize it because your name on Twitch doesn't have the capital. I know uh, some people are quite uh, specific about those sorts of things. But uh, there we go. Alva Lord. There we are. And we are ready to go, I think. Avak, purple hair. Uh, sh I'm not sure we can do purple, but I'll give it a shot. I think they are actually all normal colors. I'm afraid, uh, that's, no, that's, that's more ash. No, I'm afraid there is no purple. Red Octobear, thank you very much for the Twitch Prime sub. Okay, that is going to be it then. We are ready to roll, I think. Yeah, sorry, Ms. Fainall. Right, except roster. Okay, now... This is what I was talking about in terms of the initial startup. You've got a couple of different loadouts, so you can have money solves all problems. Anything that the town needs, they should be able to purchase from a trader. That is, presuming one finds them and has the proper goods for sale. Traders frequent uh, the area, though in the north and uh, the Arctic, it's a little bit less. If you want to go trader route, I imagine going with Raya's children is probably a better option. Food for days. The large amount of food crammed into the back of a caravan should keep the hearthlings going for a handful of days while they get their settlement up and running. Lots of food here and a cook and a trap to start with. We've also got Merchant Caravan. A collection of trade goods should give the settlement a leg up in the wilderness. Okay, a little bit short on food though, but uh, the means to get food and an archer which can double as protective duty. And a herbalist who I believe can heal? I'm not entirely certain. I have not really played this game much. Uh, this isn't a blind playthrough. I've put in a little bit of time just testing out to the... Honestly, just starting the game over and over and just seeing how things, uh, choices uh, affect stuff. But uh, in terms of actually playing through the game, I've uh, not really made any kind of progress. Or hunting party. The land is full of animals. Tasty, tasty animals. The archers can hunt them and the cook can turn them into delicious morsels. Hunting is a less reliable food source, but the archers can do double duty as town guards. Having two archers would not be a bad way to go. That would not be a bad way to go. 
Leon, I really feel like buying this game now. Damn it, why do you do this to me? <laughs> Sorry, it's a double-edged sword. Truly it is. It is a curse and a blessing. Hello, Ockham. I'm very well, thank you for asking. Uh, Grunark. Herbless is a prereq for cleric. Ah, okay. Uh, why bring food when you can kill it yourself? Also, healer is best. All right, all right. So uh, we've got a bit of a uh, of a push for the merchant caravan then, by the sounds of it. I don't know. I'm, I'm leaning a little bit towards hunting party myself, but uh, I don't mind giving this uh, uh, this choice to chat again. So let me know. But well, I mean, you can pick any of them really. But uh, I'm definitely leaning between hunting party, and it seems that there's a bit of a desire for merchant caravan as well. Thank you very much, Camel Spider. I love your name. I, I really do. Uh, yay, two whole months. Well, actually, one gifted month and one real month. Hope your day is going well. It is going well. All the better for having you here. Uh, looks like there's a good chunk of people going for hunting. Merchant does seem well-rounded. That is very true. Leaning merchant or hunting party with Fenrir. Hmm... Hunting. Is there food in the yard? Yeah, there's there's always food. Or at least so far as I've seen. Okay. Well, it seems fairly fairly split there. So I'm going to give this choice to one of our founding members. So uh, Mrs. Fainor, which one would you prefer? Hunting party, merchant caravan, which of those two? We will be able to get all um, classes eventually, it's just that there'll be a little bit more build up to get them. Miss Vaynor, ack! I've put you on the spot. I do apologize. <laughs> Ack isn't that choice. And leave and just subscribe for the 41st month. Thank you so much. I hear money solves all problems. <laughs> I mean, it has been said. Hunting party. Although I was going to abstain from voting. Very well. Hunting party it is. Okay, we're going to start with 20 gold, 15 jerky, a cook, and two archers. Now, I could select pretty much any season. Spring in the Arctic is a season of change, only lasting one month. While the highlands retain their snow cover year-round, the lowlands around the lakes start to thaw out, and young grass begins to sprout. Summer in the Arctic is a season of rest, lasting three months. The weather is mild and the lowlands are green with grass. It is a relative, uh, sorry, it is a reprieve from the cold and a time to gather strength for the long winter to come. Autumn in the Arctic is a season of freeze, only lasting one month. Although blizzards are rare, snow is a daily occurrence. It is the last chance to build shelter before the unforgiving winter arrives. And finally, winter. Winter in the Arctic is a season of hardship, lasting seven months of the year. Weather is severe, with biting winds and unforgiving blizzards, making out, uh, sorry, making farming exceedingly difficult. Even venturing outside without winter outfit can end in tragedy. Oh, we don't want tragedy. Uh, we might start in the spring, I think, and that'll give us a, a nice, nice uh, year to prep before winter entombs us. Okay, uh, Avak, let's see choose. Uh, Siri is with her sisters. She's not with me right now. Bendy Boy is with me, but uh, Siri is in the other room snoozing with Athena, Midra, and Tally. Um, I don't much like this, this map. It's got way too much water on it. Let's see if we can't find some nice lakes. Oh, that's so much better. Maybe somewhere around here. Let's have a look. Loads of game. Loads of trees, a decent amount of trees actually, yes. Uh, we've also got decent minerals in the mountains. Uh, but a, bit, a nice nice big uh, chunky bit of water as well. I think, uh, I think here would be good. Does seem that... Oh wow. 
Well, that's a very high mountain, but there's like nothing living up there. Uh, yeah, I think something around... Actually, that one's not bad either. No, I, I think trying to to capture a large mountain and this little little lake here will be good enough for us. All right, let's settle here. Leafin was always a cannibal elf. Jack Sorrow, thank you very much for the resub. 23rd month in a row. Almost two years. Hype! <laughs> thank you so much. Please put a load of love in chat for Jack Sorrow. Okay, click the banner to choose a settlement location. Interesting. Very interesting. What on earth are these? Looks scary. Uh, Alright, so... Hmm. Really? Well, it's quite interesting up there on the mountains. We've got what I believe is some sort of ruin down there. Uh, let's have a look. Got some lovely f flowers all over the place. We've got some kind of eldritch shrine. Very well. Uh, got some bunny shrines. Uh... Got a nice lake down here, some nice greenery. Okay, this is this is really interesting though. Oh, can I can I refuse this area? This place looks amazing up here. But it's right at the top. Hmm. I think it might be better to uh dig in rather than than start on the top of the mountain. That being said, it's not too hard to move around, so we could start out somewhere around here and then have uh, have access to to everything down in the valley. Perhaps we've got all kinds of uh, little bits and bobs down there. Hmm. Uh, Avak, the weird on the mountain is a possible building location for a tutorial. Ah, okay. Uh, if I was to compare this to another game, what one would I pick? Probably Nomoria. Oh, it's starting just in time for me to log out for 40 minutes to drive home from work. Oh, I'm sorry, Jake. But I will almost certainly still be streaming when you get home, so I'll be fine. Alright, uh, well... I'm thinking this little area looks quite nice. Right, right up on the on the mountain. Let's let's start off near to the mountain's edge. Maybe maybe have some sort of. Uh, I believe it'll create a fire pit. There we go, and we'll pause it right now. So we've got this little fire pit. And eventually, this will be some sort of like uh, beacon, beacon of of hope for for wayward travellers. Uh, right, we want to get a couple of things done straight away and. One of them is just to get these trees out of the way. We're going to want a way down. Uh, nothing is safe up here right now, but with, with a bit of work, we can make it safe. Or at least safer. Uh, okay, so we've got all of our people here, and we've got a lot of stuff to give them. Now, Saitanga, first and foremost, you're going to be one of my archers. Let's get you going straight away. A ranged combat unit that shoots foes with arrows. Also can help with hunting. Uh, next up, Jake. You're kind of middling. Um, I'm going to say... Jiva Goliak, I would like you to also be another archer because of the body. Jake, could I be your cook? I'm an excellent cook in real life. Well, that's uh, a pretty... Uh, good reason to be a cook? Sure. Let's get you as our cook. There you go. And finally then... Um, we're going to go with Alva Lord for the Mason, as your increased spirit and mind should help out a little bit with that. Uh, the next thing I would like to do is make sure that we've got some storage. We'll eventually probably get rid of this zone, uh, if that's even a thing you can do. I've not actually checked that it is. But let's pop a nice big zone over here. So we want seven from there. That's ten. There we go. 
that should do. And you can pretty much store everything in there. So go ahead, grab your tools, become awesome. <laughs> Amazing, I love it. Right, uh, we've got a level one mason. Standard catalogue, the mason can now make a solid array of basic furniture. Level one archer, the archer's damage is increased. You've already killed something, really? My goodness. You took your job very seriously. What did you take out, though? I can't see. Oh, there we are. Um, we've got some doodle bug meat. <laughs> Righty-o. Uh, we've also got uh, our cook. The cook can make basic and nutritious recipes. And uh, the other archer. We don't need to check that one out. Uh, one of the things that I have noticed when I was quickly checking through the game is this a really strong kind of RPG vibe. Like, all of these. It's it's not just these three stats. I, I think these are derived from from the, the three main stats. These are the ones that, at a glance, can give you an idea of how good someone will be in a certain job. But these are what really dictate everything that they can do. It's actually really, really cool. And everyone has something that they like, something that they dislike, things that they love, so on and so forth. And we, we slowly get to know them. For example... Uh, our uh, good friend here, uh, Jiva Goliak, is particularly fond of herbalist signs. And if they see one, they'll be in a fairly good mood as a, as a direct result. I, I find that really, really interesting. Now, uh, archers are just going to be on patrol for a little while, so they're not really going to help us um, store things. Well, that's okay, though. We've got a bunch of things that we can do... Uh, with crafting at the moment. I'm back. Will you play more no more? Yeah, I just finished Castle Goat and got it for myself. I may do. Uh, the game hasn't really. Well, it's got mod support, um, but it hasn't really changed over much from when I last played it. Um, but there's always a little part of me that, that fancies dipping back in. Um, I am very, very keenly interested in Ignomia, though, which is a remake of the game with. Um, permission from the, the developer uh, that is, I don't believe it's open source, but it is being remade for modern systems. It is very, very interesting. A figure appears, a stoic scout. A woman stands at the edge of camp. She wears the travel-worn blues of a scout of the library. Nobody saw her arrive, but it's clear she's been watching for some time. Welcome, traveler. Ronya, she says, pointing at herself. Her voice is strangled. As if to explain, she pulls her collar away from her throat, revealing a mess of old scars. She gestures at her knife. I scout. Then she taps the star-shaped brooch on her cloak. For Valin's library. Ah. She speaks as much with her hands and eyes as with her voice. I'm glad you've come to study and settle. Now that I know you're here, I will send tales of your learnings to the scholars at home. I, I like the way that it... it, it explained that she couldn't really talk because of the scars along her throat and then she talks with her hands and eyes as much of her voice and then from that point on instead of like broken dialogue it's expressing what she managed to convey rather than what she could say she steps over the back to the banner and touches its blank center first though you must choose your symbol what future did you foresee when you began this voyage banner hmm her voice takes on the cadence of one reciting word spoken a thousand times before. Valen created our alliance to share in plenty, adapt in hardship, and seek the horizon. The Northern Alliance will become one with the cycles and stars of hearth. She tilts her head in inquiry. Which of your philosophies does your outpost most aspire to embody? What shall we choose? Okay, we can make an official settlement declaration. <laughs> Lady Shield. Avak, you get all this story. I get a duck called Harold. To be fair, though, Lady Shield, that does sound... I mean, that's a story in and of itself. Yeah, this, this strange duck showed up the other day and, and was carrying a letter. I know I what that earth is going on. I mean, genuinely, that sounds awesome. Good night, uh, thing Bramaj. Okay. Let's see. Uh, well, we're going to go with... Well, I'm not really sure this would be the Dapper Dell, would it? Hmm.
the Dapper Mountains. That'll, that'll do. It's kind of like the Misty Mountains, only dapper. Err, uh, dapper. -er. The Misty Mountains are pretty dapper when, when when you consider the songs about it. Uh, right, Banner of Vitality. This settlement shall be at one with the environment. Trees produce 25% more wood. In fact, we'll slow this down a little bit. Uh, plants and crops both grow 25% faster, which might be good in this area if we intend to farm. And plants have two times their normal appeal. So people will just generally be happier around plants. We also have the Banner of Strength. This settlement will grow strong through earth and steel. Mining gives 50% more ore, stone and clay. Hearthlings are no longer mined cramped spaces. That might be particularly good if we're going to be dwarves. And the Banner of Cunning. This settlement will be a bustling hub of trade. Roads give three times their normal speed boost. Your items sell for 50% more. Traders will bring two times the goods and gold. Okay, that that's definitely for Rhea's children, I think. Uh, but it would be useful for anyone, I think. Okay. Dapper Hearth, Dapper Academia, Dapper Hovel? I'm not going to call my settlement a hovel. Is this a game where Dark Avak could make an appearance? Oh, I don't imagine so. I'm convinced. Going to buy this game. I wonder how long it's going to take for me to top the 101 hours I have in Nomoria. Um, 102 hours? I, <laughs> that, that, that question seems to answer itself, really. Right. My Steam Fruit reviews for this game are not so encouraging. Seems abandoned. It is in 1.0. I do appreciate, though, that there are some feelings of abandonment. The developers, um, this was a game that was funded through Kickstarter, and the developers had very big plans for the game. Uh, not all of those plans came to fruition, but the developers have effectively said that the game is all that it's ever going to be, and they don't intend to continue working on the game outside of some bug fixes in 2019. Uh, that being said, there are um, there is a reasonable amount of modding, and there is a particular um, mod that has some official support, um, or at least it's certainly officially recognized, that it adds quite a lot of content to the game. So, uh, you know, there is that. If you borrow, strength is definitely the one you'll want. Morale can be troublesome. Hmm. Banner of strength, I think it's going to be then. Uh, Dapper Delves sounds more like a, a name for a faction rather than a settlement. Um, but I, I kind of like Dapper Deep. Oops. Ah! There we go. Dapper Deep. Yeah, we'll go with that. Ba Banner of Strength. Issue the declaration. Mining gives 50% more ore, stone, and clay. And hardlings are no longer mined cramped spaces. Okay. By unanimous agreement, the citizens, we declare Dapper Deep. To be an outpost striving to be at one with the environment. Suchiru, thank you very much for the 11th month resub. Thanks so much for all your hard work and dedication. I know I lurk a lot, but catch streams as I can. All your YouTube videos. Oh, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate the support. Okay, let's go ahead and see. Death One Crawl, I've already answered your question. If you weren't listening when I gave the answer, well, that's your fault, isn't it? <laughs> no, uh, I said probably not. I very much doubt this is a, a dark Avax sort of game, but you never know. Right, I would very much like... Hmm, I don't want to undertake too large of a construction project too early, but we may see. Let's start off with a bit of a stair across there, and we're going to run this stair down. I'm not sure how low down we're going to take the stair yet, but we'll take it a couple. I believe the doors are about four tiles tall. One, two, three, four, five. So let's take it down one more. There we go. And I'm going to want to shrink this down a wee bit. Make sure that we 
get all of this dug through. There we are. Uh, that being said, perhaps I shouldn't. Well, well, we'll see if they can if they manage to cut this down. We can always build ladders as a sort of uh, makeshift scaffold if I want to. Okay, I think that's uh, good enough. Get to work then, my halflings. And whilst you're doing that, let's go ahead and build up some some uh, items. For example, the cook can make a stone cauldron. Ooh, they're doing something. Are they praying? Oh, this is uh, this is uh, Ronya. Ronya is impressed. Thank you, Ronya. I I approve of your approval. <laughs> I like the little dances they're doing. That's actually wonderful. We did choose strength. Uh, Marimimalu. Marimimalu? I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, exotic mango. My stream creeps freezing. Oh, I'm sorry. That is not coming from my end. Or at the very least, not between me and Twitch. It could very well be Twitch that is... Uh, Doing lots of shenanigans. Grunark, Avak, if you go into the building menu, you have a stair you can just place. Uh, do I really? So I do. So I do. Hmm. But am I able to lower it, though? It looks like it wants to build on top of things rather than in things. Yeah, it looks more like it's uh, for building on top of things, which is fine, but not what I'm aiming for right now. You've you, you've done this to yourself, I'm afraid. You are now stuck. Stuck forever. There's nothing we can do to help. Right, so with crafters, I would like to make a stone cauldron so that we can make some food and also get our cook starting to level up. Because much like um, Northland, if you're familiar with that game, it's a bit of an older game, um, also known as Cultures. Um, Cultures 3 specifically it was Northland. And that's the only one that, that I've ever played. Uh, I found it in a bargain bin. Um, just at the end of where you can actually get DVDs for PC games reliably. Um, at this point, I don't even have a, an optical drive in my computer. It's just no point in it. But, uh, yeah, Cultures was a really, really solid title. I really, really enjoyed it, actually. Really enjoyed it. But uh, in, in the same way, you have a bunch of Vikings, and they have skills, and as they get better at skills, they can take on further professions that are specialists uh, of your skills, and, and uh, you can upgrade their workshop based on their level. This is somewhat similar. So, for example, when our Mason is a high enough level, we could make them a Potter if we wanted. Uh, but I would like you to make me a workbench there. We've got our stone cauldron. I'm going to pop that down. It'll just be popped down out here for now. It's not exactly where I want it, but it'll do. It'll allow us to get some, some food. There we go. And you're making yourself a mason's workbench. Excellent. Perfect. Thank you. Let's get that down as well. We'll pop that over here. There we go. Uh, I wouldn't mind popping down some silver pine. Oh my lord, they grow gigantic when we place them. My lord. Yes, they do. Either that or these are young trees. Medium pine, okay. Small pine tree, just a sapling. Very well. Uh, on that note, we may want to do a little bit of gathering of plants as well where we can. Let's uh, set these to be gathered. There's not too many plants up here, but we should get what we can, as these will be very important for us later on, I imagine. It'll also give our people a, a reason to go out and have a bit of a, an explore, which may uncover more interesting things. Because right now, as things stand, we don't really have access to any uh, particular food, which is not exactly ideal. Uh, in fact, I may have some of my half to go out and, and gather some odds and sods. We've got a bit of food around at the moment, so I'm not going to rush with that one, but we should be okay. Uh, as for our cook, we've got plenty of jerky. I'm not sure what making better foods gives us, because we'd need to use three jerky to make a savoury meat stew. 
Is that better for us? It's certainly worth more. Um, always maintain one. We'll eventually run out of food, but try and maintain it. Oh, we can, we can make a uh, bub kebab. Um, sure. Go ahead and maintain one of those as well, then. Use up whatever food we've got to uh, make sure people have some delicious, delicious gnomes. Yeah, we're going to be digging homes into the mountains. Uh, at least that's my plan at the moment. Uh, right. As for things over here, we can make a crude spindle. Oh, we would be able to if we had a bundle of fire, but never mind. We can't make a crude spindle then. We can, however, make a bunch of items over here. And these I like. Um, so go ahead and make one of these just so that you've made it. I am going to need a door, though. That is a given. So make me one of those. I would like a stone table, maybe a stone chair, a bed, um, maybe some windows. That one's got a little bit of a cross in it. Uh, let's get a large window and two smaller ones. There we go. And we'll see. We'll see what we can do with that. That it will at least give our mason a fair bit of work to do. Now, are you gonna be sensible in how you dig this out? I have no idea, but I hope so. Uh, what have we got? We've got all of the uh, seeds and such. Very nice. We've explored a decent amount. We've got some copper over there, I believe. Yeah, copper ore. Okay, very nice. Aiden Serenity, thank you so much for gifting a sub to Megnol. That is your sixth gifted sub on the channel. It's very, very kind of you. Damn, Avic, my browser is currently dedicated to you. This stream and both Kenshi and Rimworld is the latest episode, ready in the corner tab. That will take some time. Good times, though. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Thank you. That's so kind of you to say, though. Uh, Brittany Disher, Avak, every time you say halflings, I hear halflings and keep thinking of the Shire. Well, um, I can't say this isn't going to become the Shire, but uh, it's not my, not my goal just yet. Uh, I'm noticing they're not doing any mining here. Now, one of the things that I have noticed is they can sometimes get very confused in what to do. So, how about I drive back the needed stuff to dig up, and maybe they'll do that then by themselves? I'm not sure. We'll see. Is anyone going to try? Are you going to come out? No. No, you are not. Well, that's going to be a little bit awkward, but at the very least, let's go ahead and go into slice mode and drop this down a bit. Um, oh, no. Excellent. That did actually work. Fantastic. I approve. Uh, in that case, then, let's uh, continue with the digging. We'll just take this top layer off first, and then we'll come back to the rest of it. We should be able to access the whole thing, so that won't be an issue, and then we can dig this away bit by bit where we can there we go and now this bit i want to take it all back if we can please there we go i might might have to be careful with the way i dig that unfortunately but oh well uh right as i was about to do let's head on down so this is going to be the, the top section in a way uh, this gives us enough room for a door let me go ahead and dig in a little bit. So, something like this. Just along there. There we go. And then I would like it a little bit lower. So we've got a, a little door. Maybe we'd have... A little window as well. Yes, I... Oops, so Daisy. That is not where I want you to go. Okay, cancel that. So you can't get in there and dig it. Because I did a silly. I did a very silly. Uh, let's pause that for a moment then. The way I'm going to try and fix this is by expanding this out to a massive amount and then trying to just get rid of the whole thing. There we go. That worked. Uh, if you're wondering how I did that, I, I instead of just increasing the vertical um, area, I increased... The horizontal as well and then just brute force the whole thing to get rid of what i needed 
So we'll drive this back a little bit further. There you go. And then, in there, I want a window. Probably about yay big. Something like that, I think. Alright, daily update. Okay, we've got enough food to get a new halfling, but we do not have enough net worth. That's fine. I don't mind that one too much. Ah, the uh, the stair tool will make a stair all the way down. That's that's pretty cool. Thank you very much for that info. That'll be very useful, I'm sure. Right. Okay, so we've got a nice big old uh, room or potential for a room. I'm going to need this to be five tall and uh, very wide. Um, six seems to be a reasonable size, I would say. Especially considering I could then sink in a window on the far side. Actually, it's, let's make it seven so it's got a bit of a, an odd number in there. Are you not able to dig that? Hmm. Sometimes they seem to get a little bit confused. So, if that happens, if they don't seem to be digging for some reason, remove their options a bit. And it should unblock them, and they'll get back to digging. It seems that they get very distracted. Yeah, they're getting super distracted. Guys, come on. Stop being silly. Let me uh, sort that. They were trying to get to the areas they could dig over here for some reason. They were like, no, no, I, w I want to dig the ones that I can't get to yet. They're the parts that I most want to dig in the whole universe. It's fine. There we go. Oh, thank you very much for the subscription. Did Stone Hearth update? Um, I'm not sure if it's updated recently, but it is 1.0. And Chronox, thank you very much for the Twitch Prime sub. There we are. Let's get all of this dug back. And then one right about there as well. And we'll just drive this back on this side. There we go. This will give us a... It's a small room. But hopefully it'll be a, be a bit of a homely area. And we want to make this only two. I think... Where did I pop that? Around here is the middle point. Yes, indeed it is. Let me get one there, there, and there. I think the long windows we've got will need that much room. We'll see. But at the very least, I can pop down some of the components. So a door there. I'll have a little window right about here. There we go. You know what else that I would like? I would very much like... Because I, I'm having the stonemason make their own room first. I would like this. Uh, I could get some some uh, braziers, that sort of thing. That's certainly an option. Um, sure, get me a brazier. Maybe a candle. Maybe just two candles. I'll, I'll allow you to build a brazier anyway. Just because I'm going to want one. But, um, have you all finished with the digging for the day? Because I don't feel that you should have. You coming down here, hopefully, to dig? No? Okay. Well, let's uh, remove the stuff you can't possibly access yet. And let you dig that out a little bit better. Well, that's actually starting to look quite nice, I think. Uh, I would like the mason sign. How does this look? Mm, sure. Pop that in there. You have a brazier somewhere, just like in the corner, maybe, under the sign. No, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure where we're going to put the brazier yet. We'll see. For some reason, you just refuse to dig, though. Alva Lord has become a level 2 mason. That's actually awesome. Fancy rocks. The mason can now make more elaborate items from stone. Excellent. Also, we've got a gift. Ronya produces a small pouch. Thank you, Ronya whispers. And from her gesture... It is clear she means for your hospitality and, pres and presence. She places a small pouch beside the banner. On its side is an emblem of the nearest large town, some days distant. Our towns are stars in the constellation of our people, she says. For you, from them. So that one day, you will join those ranks. 
The bag contains one cornbread, two peasant bread, and four roast sausages. Oh, thank you very much. Delicious. Ronya then rises. Ronya is now standing by the edge of the fire. She's written the town name and a brief account of its inhabitants in the white flesh of a birch bark shaving. Methodically, she commits it to the flames, which burn paler for a moment. Dapper deep, she intones. By Valen's wisdom and under the watchful eyes of the stars above, be committed to the records of the library. That works? She smiles with her eyes only. Those that matter will hear. She bows and makes to fade back into the edges of the wilderness. Farewell, she gestures. I will return for your stories. Travel under the stars. See, the story is actually incredibly sweet. I, I really like the, the writing there. Wild game has been sighted. Oh, down there. Okay, we're going to need our archers to be able to get down there for now. And for the time being, I'm going to say go ahead. We'll, we'll do this the simplest of simple ways. We'll build a ladder down. That will allow us to access the area down there so our archers can get down there and uh, deal with any potential game. Right. But again, I, I really, really like the, the story in this. It, it's actually quite sweet. Gotta be honest. Uh, let's get this as well. So let's expand out this little area. And we want to pop in a nice broad window. There we go. Lovely. Okay, so now that we're down here, we may as well start uh, gathering some items. I didn't really want to expand down here too quickly, but uh, it's fine. We'll grab that stone as well. Grab plenty of seeds while we can. Let's see what we can do. Got a bunch of uh, sweet potatoes over there. Yum, 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 yum. Oh dear. Enemies. This is the problem with being down here. But, you know, it's a, it's a thing. I'm going to have to deal with that thing. Right. Uh, where are our... There we go. There's our archers. Archers, could you make your way down here, please? Right, let's turn off slice for now. Archer is on the way. Where is the second archer, though? Is the question I have. Invaders approaching, indeed they are. Oh, they're both together, okay. We are up against Stonelings. He's just a pebble. There's one gone. Hard mode. In hard mode, enemies have more armor and health and will inflict more damage. There we go. Quickly, another shot. There you go, well done. You can uh, patrol down there, but you're probably not going to find anything else that you need to find. Oh, snoozing. Right, I would like this to be just this wide for now. And we'll go, go back into slice mode so I can have a look at this room. We've got a couple of things I want to pop in it. So, first and foremost, we're going to want a bed. Let's sort of take that around. I have a wee bed in the corner there. Maybe a candle or two. Candle just about there. Just to illuminate this room a bit. I would also very much like a table and chair, maybe. Perhaps right there, looking out, out the window. Uh, yeah, sure, we'll have the uh, chair right next to it as well. There you go. Um, as this is the mason's area, uh, should we bring the mason's workshop in here? We could do. We could expand it out and, and actually build a little room off this area for them. I think that's actually a nice idea. So sure. Let's uh, go ahead and give you another little room right at the back there. And then expand this out. So let's uh, once again... Try and work with what we've got so that they don't get a little too confused. Then we'll build out into this room. We'll have another another window back here, perhaps. Uh, might even make a little little balcony or something. Um, maybe in this corner over there. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe have some sort of storage area or something. Uh, we'll we'll see how that goes. 